Okay, so shout outs for this video go to Hornby Train Spotting and Farming, Daniel Simpson, Trevor Rodway, Chris Davies, Fleetwood, Vermilion Hugh, and Love Minis. Thank you guys for leaving a comment. Mind the gap. Welcome aboard, commuters. So, I've decided that this week I'm going to go through all the rating for the magazine. Um, I don't think it adds or detracts from the magazine uh, by telling you all the ratings beforehand. Um, I've also had a couple of small issues. You'll see that I've just checked the magazine. It's actually come open. Um, so I was very keen to make sure I got that on film. The main reason for that was that if there were any lost parts or any problems, um, I've actually got some video evidence to show um, the people they see there, I'm opening it now. Um, but obviously then I've got some kind of evidence to show um, that, that there is problems. However, um, as per usual, the parts are actually sealed inside a bag, inside that bag. So there's actually nothing lost. So the overall look and feel of the magazine, um, again, I consulted with a lady in WH Smith, the news agents. We absolutely loved it. Um, now, obviously, this lady, she sees hundreds of magazines every day. Um, she's starting to see this a little bit more regular. Um, so, But she knows nothing about buses. So I feel that her rating of a 9 was very reasonable. However, I did override that and I changed it up to a 10. Um, because the look and feel of the parts are fantastic. It was a heavy part. Obviously, by the time I'd got the bus home and I've... I'm trying to look in the magazine without actually opening it. Um, it really did feel fantastic. So the part count was technically an 8 or a 9. We have a rear axle, a differential cover, a trailing arm and a trailing arm base, a crossbar and a cross rod, an adapter. Now the uh, adapters, there's actually two of them and, and I wanted to be generous so I've, I've I've, I've counted those as two separate parts and there are five different packs of screws they're all M screws which means that they screw into metal and that's CM, MM, FM, GM and NM so here I'm just checking the parts um, and all the parts are complete um, now it did take over 30 minutes to build um, However, you may get this done a lot quicker. Um, the reason it took me 30 minutes is obviously I'm explaining everything on camera as I record. However, I'm more than happy to give it 10 out of 10 for build time. Um, as I progressed, the instructions were as clear as they need to be. I found the last two or three issues. They seem to explain, complicate things a little bit more clearly. Um, in fact, section six they actually split that into three so you've got six six a and six b and i really don't think any more effort could be made now there were a couple of problems on the way um however with a a reasonable mix of a little bit of strength a little bit of forethought and a little bit of patience we managed to get them through uh, get through it sorry um, so this actually avoided me knocking it down um, by any mark, so it scored 10 out of 10. So I'm pleased to say that the overall score for the third consecutive week is 98%. The only way that this issue could have been improved was by adding one extra part and it would have scored 100%, um, which the only time that's been reached is for an issue one. Um, and that was mainly because there were no problems, instructions were okay, there wasn't actually much to build, um, but the overall feel looked fantastic. So maybe next week, guys. Okay, so I'll just finish checking the parts, and then we'll crack on with the build. Okay, so we begin with section one, and the first part we need is the trailing arm, 14C. And this is quite difficult to explain, um, but I will actually um, freeze frame in, in, in the relevant places. 
Um, this actually is not straight. Um, you've got a larger hole and a smaller hole, as you can see there. Um, now that needs to go into uh, the trailing arm base 14D. And you see there, that's actually the wrong way around. Because it actually goes at an angle, um, it points downwards, but it actually needs to point away from the base. Um, now I will confess, um, this doesn't actually attach to anything in this part, so we won't know if that's correct until we actually fit it. However, it does say, quote, so the arm is angled away from the base. Um, after checking the orientation, fix in place with two FM screws. So um, I'll, I'll fast forward this as I normally do, but I will freeze frame when I get a really good shot of the angle that it should be at. Okay, and here's a, a snapshot of the angle. It shows that it is facing away, it's, it's heading away from the, the actual base. And then as I say, we just attach that with two FM screws. Now you will notice I do struggle a little bit with these screws. That's because they're all self-tapping screws. That means that they're actually going to cut the thread into the metal as you, you screw them in. Um, this is why um, where I've been tightening, loosening, tightening, loosening, loosening, this is actually why it has a good effect. So section one should look something like this. Okay, so section two is another relatively simple part. You need part 14A, the rear axle, and you need the differential cover, uh, part 14B. This will be fixed in with two GM screws. Now do test fit um, the differential cover. It will line up into some lugs. Um, if, you, if it's lined up correctly, you will not be able to, to slide it sideways. If it's not quite in right, it will slide in. Um, there you see I'm trying in a very strange fashion to try to explain um, how differential works. Um, but obviously that doesn't help build it. But it was very entertaining. Um, so once you've done this, this will attach in with GM screws. Now do note before you put the uh, rear axle and the differential cover to get together, um, note the channels and obviously that's the angle you'll need to come in with the screws. Um, now I used the larger of the two screwdrivers and what I did is I attached the first screw roughly halfway, then I went and did the other one, uh, the second screw, and popped that in nearly all the way, then went back to the first screw and just kept alternating between the two screws. Um, I actually found that one screw, I felt that was in as tight as it would go, went on to the next screw, then went back to the first one and I found that I could actually screw it a little bit more, um, but I found it a very, very good fit once it was actually screwed in. Okay, on to section 3 and you will require the crossbar 14E and two adapters 14G. Um, now I cannot stress enough, have a look at the magazine, check the orientation, you'll see that on one side the hole is larger than the other. Double check. Um, now there was also very small circles. Um, you'll see that these adapters actually have little uh, locate, locating pegs. Um, I've called them lugs. Um, locating pegs is a much better word to use and that's the word that they use in the magazine. Now these are both 14G and what I actually eventually did was I lined up the locating peg um, because my fingers were that much bigger than the, the uh, adapters I actually used tweezers. Now don't worry about lining the screw hole up just 
locate the locating peg, peg, pop it in, and then you'll find you can actually swivel it until it lines up with the uh, sc uh, screw hole. You'll need two NM screws. Now what I personally would do was work on one adapter and then go back to the other one because obviously if it's loose while you're screwing um, it's, it's just going to fall out and you'll need to find it. These are the only plastic parts of the, uh, the build and they're very small and they can be picked up just literally by a gust of wind. Okay, so for the next part, we need the parts that we fit we made the previous two weeks, and it was interesting because they are actually different. I was so focused on each build each week that I didn't notice the difference. Um, however, per section four says to uh, take the rear suspension, right rear suspension arm assembled in part 13, and the rear axle, check the orientation, slip the end of the axle into the hole. Now I didn't take a photo of this, the reason being is because it's going to fall out when you build section 5. So remove that, just make sure it fits and then take it out and, and then uh, don't actually affix this, this axle until um, probably section 7. Um, all will become clearer later on. Okay, so section 5, you need the cross rod 14F, and that's the only part that's left. Um, now, I did struggle for the, with this. Um, you'll need to insert that into uh, near the rear, and you will see that there's two holes from the outside, uh, sorry, from the inside, but there's only one hole on the outside. That's because one is a hole for a locating peg, and the other hole is for the screw. Now, if you're not 100% sure, I used my employee of the month, which is a cocktail stick. Uh, pop the cocktail stick in from the outside and then pop the rod over the, uh, the, the, the part of the cocktail stick that pokes onto the other side. Pop the rod on over there and then there you will find the locating. And then you will see why we... Um, we actually have the front bit, we remove it. You see I'm holding it with my left hand. As soon as I pick that up, that's going to fall off. But you see we've located that and we're going to attach that with a CM screw. Now that is very, very difficult because it's a self-tapping screw and it's cutting the thread. Um, it is difficult, so uh, it's quite, quite difficult. You're going forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, but always going more forwards than back and eventually that will go. Um, I thought that wasn't going to stay on um, tight. There was always some give. And then each time I went back and I unscrewed it, say a quarter of a screw, and then forwards half a screw, maybe not even as much as that, and eventually it did go in really nice and tight. Okay, so section six is the part that's uh, is split into three sections, and we need to take the crossbar assembly from step three, check that you have the orientation the right way. Um, basically, what that means is the larger hole needs to be closer to the um, 
the right rear suspension arm that you've just attached the um oh, i forgot what it's called now uh the suspension is it the suspension of the cross rod sorry my bad um now what you'll need to do is if you remember we had the brake line that we didn't attach to to anything we've just got it flapping that needs to go through the hole the little plastic hole made by the is it the connector um uh, just sorry the adapter sorry i'm getting my words wrong um and then we move on to 6a sorry that is 6a we need to fix that with an mm screw um now if you what if you look at the end you'll see that it looks like um on on the actual right rear suspension arm you'll have what looks like a keyhole um whereas the the part that we made in section three of this issue there's a little locator that looks like a key and that will line up very well um i actually didn't notice that until later on and the part just fitted snugly and obviously that was the reason why um now it was difficult to screw in i thought there were problems um so what i actually ended up doing was taking the crossbar assembly off the right rear suspension arm screwing the screw in again doing the forwards and backwards motion and then once i was satisfied that that could go in as far as it would go i then took the screw out then i screwed it to the right rear suspension arm um, so watch have fun watching me um, work really really hard for this Okay, so section 6B says to fit the free end of the brake line, 13K, into the peg on the brake line connector, 13G. Um, now, I wasn't happy with the length. I thought this was too long. Um, you will see that once I've attached it there, it just it pokes out too far. Um, I felt that was very impractical. It wouldn't have been like that in real life that would run the risk of uh, catching in the engine parts or or any moving parts under the bus and it didn't even look the same as the magazine now i understand why they've done it like that because it's probably cut by a machine and it's better to cut it too long um, now the next part what i'm going to do is not in the magazine i stress is not in the magazine um, I worked out the length that I thought it, sh I felt it should be, and I cut the end off. Um, now I may come a cropper in a future issue because of that. That may actually be precision cut. Um, it is, it's a decision that I took on my own. Um, in fact, one of my Twitch viewers kind of went no in the chat, um, and I did ignore them. I didn't ignore them. I explained why I did it. Um, but I felt that by cutting the end off, um, it just made the whole thing look more realistic. Um, and it's a decision that I took. I will not encourage anybody to do it. I'm just, I've left this in just so you can see what I did. OK, 
Okay, so there's a quick snapshot showing what it looks like after I remove the end. Okay, this section six complete and showing the uh, the part that I've removed. Okay, so section seven offers an expression that I've I've heard of before, and I think it's absolutely wonderful. The expression is offer up. That to, now I've always used the word dry fit. But usually when I say dry fit, it's to do, say, for example, with plastic models where I fit the part without glue. Once I'm happy with the fit, then I glue them together. Because there's no glue here, I think the words offer up is a much nicer expression. So basically what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to offer up these pits, bits. We're going to make sure they fit. We already know how they're supposed to fit because we've already done the previous side. And that is seven, section seven complete. Just offer up the parts, make sure they fit. Okay, so once you're happy with the fit, um, you need to, to attach that using the CM screw to fix the uh, crossbar, sorry, the, um, the cross rod and the MM screw to fix the crossbar. You can do these in any order you like. I personally did the CM um, screw first. Once that's screwed in, make sure it's nice and tight. Give it a little wiggle, see how much play you've got. And then you need to move on to section nine which is um, placing the brake line connector through the, um, oh, I keep forgetting the name of the parts, uh, through, through the adapter onto the spare end of the brake line connector, and then that will finish your build. Uh, take your time, um, have something to drink. If you smoke, have a smoke. Um, really relax, it's a fun build, and we're, we're, we're now actually, um, getting something solid uh, the only downside to this is the part that we made in our oh, section one um, we're not actually going to fit that today um, so you are end ending up with another small trailing part um, but hey ho that's the way the build goes Now I had trimmed the opposite brake line, um, I thought it looked a little bit nicer to have them symmetrical, um, but this is the, fi the finished view, um, do a comparison with the magazine, I think it's absolutely wonderful, um, really nice part. Okay now I was going to leave this part of the video out, but what can I say, I'm a big child. Um, so what, what I wanted to do was have a look at, say, see how big the wheels were. Um, obviously, I've used the front wheel because I haven't got a rear wheel yet, but it should give us a rough idea of the size. Then I have a play with the stairs, um, and then I just kind of want to see what it starts to look like. So, yeah, obviously, I'm a big child. I'm, I'm going to have a play. Okay, this is the section of the mag uh, the video where I have a look through the magazine. Um, now there's a, a little look at route number two, um, but the, the article that fascinated me a lot was uh, the builders of the Route Master AEC. Um, absolutely loved it. Lots of pictures of old buses. Um, one in particular that I I noticed was the Q-type. Um, 
Now, obviously, I'm building the Route Master. I think it's a beautiful model. And looking at the Q type, um, I think it's quite an ugly looking bus. It's not got a good capacity. Um, but if you actually um, remove the, the Route Master from your mind and just look at the Q type on its own individually, not comparing to anything, actually, that's a thing of beauty. Um, so it just goes to show. Um, the Route Master it's, it's, it's so beautiful it actually makes other buses look ugly um, and then there's a poster um, and it's a really nice magazine okay my section uh, favorite section after the actual build is the coming in the next issue and we shall assemble the suspension arms and shock absorber columns and check the progress that we've made with our Route Master build over issues 1 to 15 Okay, and a big, big thank you to Dan Simpson, who very, very kindly sent in his photos of his build. Um, absolutely amazing. I, I love them. Um, just one question now. Are you building it twice? Um, I did notice that one of your pictures, you seem to have um, two items the same, the, the, the suspension. Okay, another section I really enjoy is the comments that you've left in the previous video. Um, so Hornby Train Spotting and Farming writes, Thanks again for the shout out. I always enjoy your videos and I watch you on Twitch. This is going to look very good. Uh, Daniel Simpson writes, uh, Hi, thanks for letting me know. I'd like to send you pictures of my build. How do I send them to you? I have done some mods on mine. Looks a bit better, I think. Would like to know what you think. Just to let you know, Penny, I'm a fan. When I do my bills, I watch you at the same time. Keep up the good work. Yes, I did actually forget to um, to tell. Uh, last week, I asked you to send any pictures in, and I forgot to tell you how. Um, I think your pictures are absolutely wonderful. I think that, that I, I love them. Um, please, everybody, send them in. Um, they're so much fun to view. Uh, Trevor Rodway writes, another good build, Penny. Chris Davies writes, always enjoy your videos, Penny, you're awesome. Uh, Fleetwood writes, thanks again, Penny, for a great video. Feeling more happier by Root Ma my, uh, sorry, feeling more happier. My Root Master parts have arrived. Hope the next lot comes on time and no more delays. Um, I believe that they have actually arrived uh, since the last... Uh, video that I put out. I know a lot of people are reporting that they finally turned up um, They blame Easter for the uh, the last uh, lot of problems. I don't know what the real reason is um, But obviously, you know it happens uh, Vermillion Hugh writes great series penny my dad drove these in the 60s Ironically around Norwich keep up the good work and best wishes to you Hugh um, I wonder if I may have met your dad. Um, obviously, if he's driving in the 70s, he probably would have retired or come close to retiring um, when I was driving in Norwich. But, um, yeah, it'd be interesting to know maybe, or maybe I've got on his bus. Um, maybe your dad was the bus driver or the conductor who was responsible for me to uh, actually get into buses. Um, that's a story I will say for another video, um, but it was, yeah, it's been a childhood dream of mine to drive buses. Uh, and Love Minis writes, the toolbox and pillbox for screws are great ideas. Uh, yeah, it was a great idea until we got this issue. Um, we've now got our 11th, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, sorry, 14 sections in that pillbox. And now we have a 15th type of screw, so now I've got to buy another pillbox just for one type of screw um, although I'm sure that with the combination of all my part works it will get used um, so thanks for watching guys um, I really appreciate it and I will speak to you all again in uh, next week in for issue 15 take care have a great week